Are we filming? Yes, we are. So let's have a look what we're going to test today. So we're going to use a Nuda's dropper pen. And we're also going to test that with Nuda's Rain Burning Ink in a moleskin. I've got pseudo A4 because it's easier to do that than, than write the actual measurements. Uh, but it's like an extra large moleskin or moleskin or whatever. So let's have a look at those things. So this is the, the, the moleskin in question. And I'm just going to measure it because it's uh, it's a it's a bit of a a bit of a hefty tome. Uh, 19 centimeters by 90 centimeters wide by 20 uh, 25.2. That's the that's the outer. That is the outer uh, boards and the paper's a little bit thinner. It's very, very similar to A4. Let me give you an indication. Let me find some A4 just to compare it. Um, so this is a sheet of A4. Uh, and if I, if I place it in one corner of the A4, you can see that it is uh, roughly two centimeters narrower. And uh, let me line it up again, and it is uh, four centimeters shorter. So that's the that's the uh, that's the, the the way of it, as it were. Um, traditional moleskin notebook. Um, not sure how many pages because it doesn't say. I don't know why it doesn't say. Um, I've actually put the quality troll sticker. I've I've taken it out the uh, the flap at the back and just put it there so I don't lose it because these quality control stickers are interesting. I know some of you like to know. They say, "What colour is it? What colour is it? Is it a blue one? Is it a blue one? Oh no, it's a and and then you know we'll see. Uh, but it is a moleskin. It's got this. Um, it's got this motto at the back. Uh, by uh, Maria Sebrigondi, who is the co-founder of the uh, and president of the Moleskine Foundation, and she says, "Let's have a look at what she says, because it's quite interesting." Every Moleskine notebook is a book yet to be written and a story waiting to be told. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? But what I want to know is, what I want to know. There we go. Is how does a moleskin fare with regards to paper quality? And I say that slightly uh, tongue-in-cheek because uh, we know uh, that, uh, many of you know, that the, the paper quality varies with moleskin. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. I do like moleskins, so that the feel of them, the look of them. The one thing I don't like, to be honest, is the paper quality which is not great for fountain pens unless you're lucky and get one that does uh, but let's find out with this one okay so um what do i think about this book well we've got this the same we've got the same thing that you get in most books where you've got a i i this is one of my pet hates you actually have to sort out the fold at the beginning because of the way the, the, the book is uh, manufactured and that's that's very very typical of this kind of book um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start on this page and we're going to go for let me get some let me get some uh some toweling here and the rain burning and a suitable a suitable paintbrush I'm just going to uh, shake it a little bit okay so um, noodles ink rain burning it is uh, it is there well there's a lot of controversy surrounding uh, Nathan Tardiff and his uh, and his hands drawn labels um 
but I'm I'm not going to I'm not going I'm I'm just sitting on the fence because I, I'm just reporting what I see rather than uh, commenting on any political political uh, uh, somebody else's political persuasion as it were um, but it's an interesting thing is it not so let's have a look at this so. Noodler's Rome Burning. I believe it's... Uh, so the rumour is it's just called Rome now rather than Rome Burning, but I can't be sure. So, here we go. I actually quite like that. Let me put the paintbrush carefully away. And the cap on the bottle. I haven't had an accident yet, but knowing me, I probably will. So let's put that away. So uh, what are we going to use? We are going to use... Um, uh, where was it? Here we go. So this is a... This is a... This is a Noodler's pen. Um, I don't know what model it is, but it says, uh, it says Charlie. It says Charlie on there. Can you see that? Yes. Yes, you can. Noodles Charlie. Um, I'm assuming these are made in somewhere like India, but let me just check that it's, uh, it's working. Yes, it is. I'm going to, uh, post the pen. Right. So I'm left-handed, so I'm just going to move it, move it around a bit. Okay, so it is a moleskin. This is, by the way, um, uh, I believe it's a fine nib. Let me just have a look at my magnifying glass and have a look at this. Um, do you know what? It doesn't actually say. Doesn't actually say. Um, it just says Noodler's Ink. Okay, writes very well there. Uh, and I think it's, I'm just going to describe it as an extra large. Molson extra large rules notebook. Okay, let's, let's just call it a notebook. I really, really like this colour on this moleskin coloured paper. I like it. I like it. Um, and it is a uh, Noodler's pen. Um, and it's a, it's a dropper pen. So it's threaded here. And you can, again, I've got some grease on here. And there we go. So just uh, using your eyedropper and fill it up and it's quite a long pen so you've, you've got a huge ink reservoir here probably um i mean i use i sometimes use a kueco with a kueco cartridge and i would say this has arguably five or six times the capacity of a kueco cartridge Anyway, let me carry on writing. Noodler's pen. I'm just going to put uh, Charlie. I don't know whether that's the, the the model, but that's what it says. I'm just reporting. Uh, it is a it is a fine nib, isn't it? It looks like a fine nib. Um, and the ink is uh, Noodler's Rome burning. Okay, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of paper just to write that, but there we go. Um, pen seems to write very very well. Nice. Yeah, I like that. I could easily use that as a as a as a pen when I'm out and about. Very easily. Nice. Yes, I like that. 
Uh, it feels a little bit, I wouldn't say scratchy, there's a certain, quite a lot of bite to it, but um, it's it's good. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, right. This is the moment of truth. Um, oh, I tell you what, I like pens that screw together when you when you when you cap them. I like that. Rather rather than clip. I like them if they actually screw together. So this is the moment of truth, isn't it? It's what you've all been waiting for. Let make let's make sure that we've got just one page. And here we go. Okay, let's have a close look and see what we've got here. Well, well, let me just uh, let me just blow my nose. Um, this is obviously disappointing, isn't it? Um, it looks like um, very clearly that this moleskin is completely unusable for those that wish to use a fountain pen, which is a shame, which is a crying shame. Um, some of these moleskins are great for fountain pens, others aren't. Um, and the problem is you don't know which one is which when you go into a store uh, and buy one because they're wrapped in cellophane and you, you can't test them. Uh, and I don't think Moleskin are in the business of letting us know by putting maybe a sticker on the on the front saying this is fountain pen friendly. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't say that in jest because, because um, as you are probably aware, I'm a big fan of Filofaxes. And recently, last couple of years, possibly a little bit longer, um... Filofax have actually perfected uh, fountain pen friendly paper and they they make it clear that it's fountain pen friendly because they actually uh, write that on the front it's printed on the outer cover so you can look at it and see ah this is fountain pen friendly so I think given the fact that I mean this is this is my this is my idea um if i was in charge of moleskin i don't know maybe maybe not who knows i don't know but what i would what i would suggest to them if anyone from moleskin are listening is this is this is not this is not great for fountain pen users um so you should put a sticker on the front saying i don't know somewhere here and just write uh, in fact, I'm actually going to do. I think this is this is the this is the sort of label that um, Moleskin should uh, should uh, put. Maybe that, and with a big circle around it. Okay, what do you think? Or perhaps they should put uh, not for fountain pen use. You know, not like a public health warming or anything, but if you just, if they, if they, uh, if they put not for fountain pen use on the ones that aren't great for fountain pens, and then they put a one that says fountain pen friendly on the ones that are, and they they can clear they qu clearly know because they c they look at the quality control and they can test batches and they can say ah oh, well that the paper from that factory it turns out to be uh, fountain pen angry, and the paper from this other factory turns out to be fountain pen friendly and they could actually put this label on the ones where uh, on on this particular batch for instance. Um, let's, let's cross off that. That's, that's silly. This will be good. Not for fountain pen friend, not for fountain pen use. So people know, and they can put one saying fountain pen friendly on 
the ones that are fountain pen friendly. In fact, I'm just going to do something. I'm just going to I'm just going to show you something. Now this is a this is a moleskin, as you know. But let me show you something. Did I do it at the front or the back? Okay, so this is a little test I did in an earlier video. Um, where I've done three three uh, three pens. I've done the uh, Pilot G2, which is which is one of these, a gel pen, and then two fountain pens. And when you turn them over, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of show through, a little bit of shadow, but there's no bleed through. You compare that to this one. Well, it's completely different, completely different paper. So I would put on here. I would put something like that with a big circle around it and and then you would know why not they could might be able to sell these for more because they're fountain pen friendly and it would solve a lot of anguish and frustration amongst customers who want to use their fountain pens and discover that the moleskin they've got is like this, which is fountain pen angry, um, and sometimes find one which is fountain pen friendly. This one has got a blue sticker. Apparently blue stickers are, are a good sign of fountain pen friendly paper, but obviously you can't tell without, without buying it first. This one has the gray, a grey sticker and it's clearly not not very not very good so so this is an interesting conundrum uh where there's more than one grade of paper this is absolutely fine in my opinion if you are the sort of person that is using a pilot pen i've got uh I've got another moleskin here. Oh, not that one. Let me try another one here. Uh, I've got uh, I've got this one. This is one I'm using at the moment, uh, which is a which is a moleskin, and this is very very much. Uh, this one is very much fountain pen angry. But that is absolutely fine if you're using, in my case, a Parker G2. No problem at all. No problem at all. So I'm happy with that. And I like the feel of a moleskin. It it's, feels good in the hand. And the paper feels good. But clearly only in that particular case for a, for a, for a gel pen, for instance, or a pencil. And this one, clearly pretty pretty much useless for fountain pen use unless of course unless of course you just write one page one sided on the page which some people do um and it's i certainly i use i use this one sided uh, with the pilot g2 so so i'm i'm uh, having my cake and eating it as it were uh, but clearly this is clearly this is no good for uh it's no good for fountain pens is it um but i uh it is an experiment um and thank you for watching another of my ink and paper series until my next video goodbye